after it took our crew one and a half hours to set up, <laughs> we can eventually now bring you Use It or Lose It episode six. We are at the beautiful Val de Vie um, and at the Pearl Valley Golf Course. And for the first time in two series, we are bringing you an absolute international superstar. But he's South African. His name <laughs> is Christian Johan Stander <laughs> from Ireland. Hello, oh, CJ. Hello, guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't know we're doing this in English, so if I catch myself quick speaking a different language here at some stage, I still can't do the English at well. So. It's, it's fine. Yeah, okay. But that's a great and, and show, only spent 10 years in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're Irish, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, for, I actually for, got a passport, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So your, your English is supposed to be good. Yeah, I know, but like, that's, you, I can only say, yeah, no. But good to be back in South Africa. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, great spending time with the family and uh, a winter's day like this is uh, spoiling me. Yeah, it's not bad at all, eh? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to delve a little bit into your Irish experience um, and, uh, and, and talk about Irish rugby. We're going to talk about Lions rugby. Yep. We are in between, it doesn't matter when you are actually watching this, we're in between mm. test one and test two of the British and Irish Lions series versus the box. Obviously, the, uh, the Lions winning the first series, so we will touch on that a little bit. Um, but I think, Scala, as we, as we kind of move into the very important stuff, stuff do you think we can do quick fire questions with mm. CJ so yes. that we can get to know him a little bit better? I'm I think it's a good here. start for us, eh? I was waiting for this. Yeah. If I can get the passcode of this phone correct, which I luckily yeah, don't. The, the crew also changed yeah. that while they were sitting <laughs> up know, for three and a half hours. Okay, CJ. Okay, you can. Let's go. It's just a few quick ones. Um, quick fire questions brought to you by Vodacom. Yeah. Brandy or beer? Brandy. <laughs> That's a quick answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw B, sorry, B. I mean, was, he was slow with the tea or coffee. I know, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I know. Bulls or Munster? Munster. Yeah, 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 there we answer, go. Yeah. Good answer. Uh, <laughs> since you're only 31, comeback or retirement? Uh, retirement. I've lost too oh, much we, weight. We're definitely touching on that as well. Okay. Ball carries or tackles? Uh, ball carries. Yeah, same yeah. here. Same here. <laughs> Flank or Aitman? Uh, Aitman. This one's tough. Paul Jim or Oakdale? Seeing that you've moved to Paul, <laughs> where are we going? It's uh, tough. Uh, Oakdale, Oakdale, Oakdale. Sure. Yeah, Double 100%. Check, yeah. So, uh, so your daughter, will, will she go to Oakdale? Or? Um, I, always, I, I try to get in there. You know, yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. You know, it's uh, a yeah. boys' school. So, uh, Paul Jim's got a chance, maybe? Well, yeah, Paul Jim's yeah, definitely got we'll a chance. See, we'll see. Okay, I, okay, I talked okay, to my wife can... first. You know, they're big, great people also. You know, so I don't know. I know. Yeah. Well, she can't <laughs> get a great idea. <laughs> um, Leading on to that, Paul or Limerick? Uh, for now, Paul. Yeah, I know it's a big one. But call, I know, I know why, you, why you took so long. I also spent yeah. time in Limerick and yeah. it's got a very special place in my heart yeah. as well. Yeah, I know it does have cute. a specific yeah. John, very cute. Okay, this one. <laughs> Maybe a bit contentious, but fire or bonfire? <laughs> fire. Fire. <laughs> okay. okay. Bonfire is not a nice one. <laughs> you don't like bonfires? Mm -mm. Like I a control a normal fire, you know. Bonfire yeah. is just yeah, stuff can, happens. Can you can you share with us what happened there? Um well, I, I've actually got a you know we've got some questions. Oh do we? We've got massive fans. Okay, okay. Go there just have a look at that question. The well, relevant one there bottom no. Ali Potter Bloomfontein. Okay. That's fine. So we're on a tight budget now. Um that was uh can you share it? Because that's a fascinating, well not fascinating story, quite a dangerous story. Yeah, and some of our yeah. Yeah, no, I think we um we we, we just barbecued or fry. Yeah. Sorry, barbecue. That's, yeah. uh, that's Irish. That's yeah. <laughs> but uh, we just finished a nice braai and then um, on normal uh, two Weber's we had and then uh, we had a fire pit um, in the middle like a bonfire and uh, we were to start it, you know, it's limerick and the woods mm. wet and all those things, you know, and then we had this uh, fire lighter next to it and uh, that's what we started with and we just left it on the side, not close to it, just on the side of it yeah. and it started to put fire. And then it just exploded. Sure. Um, yeah. So it was, it was it was scary. It's not it's not a 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, were you okay? You I, was got, I got a few burns and a few uh, on my hands, mostly my arms and my, my legs, but I was wearing a jean, as I do, with a nice tucked in shirt and a big jacket. Yeah. So, yeah. But, big night uh, night. Yeah, no, so um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was actually very dramatic, really, and yeah, it was scary, and I'm just yeah. glad that uh, Damien's back and playing well and uh, yeah. RG, yeah, he's on his way back. So. But it was a, like an explosion. Yeah, eh? it was a bit, it was quick. It was a big explosion. And then, um, then it was just, everyone was, it was, we were about, we were about 10 guys there, you know, just sure. sitting on the fire. So then everyone, just a shock sh straight in. RG was the first one to get away to get to hospital and then Damien and then the rest of them. There's a few guys who got burned as well. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, it's a, it, it's amazing how, you know, obviously you, you uh, you get word of the of the story and of this, you know, monster team in Ireland uh, that that the, what the fire caused yeah. and the explosion and some of the guys got burned and then you read the names and it's C J. Yeah, yeah. 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 it, it, it was definitely not the Irish bloke starting yeah, yeah, a fire. Yeah, no, it was actually yeah. a few Irish guys. We we do it like once a month at least, yeah. you know. So it was, it was a few Irish guys, but they they were lucky enough. I think the the three of us we were next to each other, you know. So the thing yeah. came our way, you know. So it was. Yeah, I just remember the one thing about about a fire is you don't see uh, yellow or red or something. You just see black. Sure. Yeah. So that's what you see. And then, suddenly, and then stuff afterwards. Yeah, it was dramatic getting everyone to hospital, making sure everyone's fine. And uh, yeah, well, we were we were we were all right. Yeah. We're glad that everyone's actually yeah. all right. Hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was uh, it was a big fright, man. The guys wanted to, you know, especially Arj, wanted to play as well in the series, you know. So, but he's coming back from a knee, so because um, yeah. it was just his time, you know, just to be. Time to be back, you know, so uh, exactly like Damien yeah. Conjol and I can remember my mom always, mm -hmm. you know, always say don't don't play with play fire, fire you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it uh, it's so true. You're gonna wet the bed, yeah, yeah. that's what they yeah, say. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But yeah, hopefully that didn't happen. Um <laughs> we'll we'll move on to more positive stories, but let's start on well, some might see it as a positive, some might see it as a negative. Um your career obviously started here in South Africa. Mm. You went to to Oakdale um, high school, also a school, you know, very, very rich in tradition and, and uh, you know, certainly from my, my days playing for Paul Jim, it's kind of, I'm sure you're the same, yeah, you're tough, as, tough as hell playing massive there. Massive rivalry, yeah, yeah. prolific, yeah, and also like hard, <laughs> eh? like yeah. farming community. Yeah, 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 if you come to the farm, we yeah. call it the place to come, yeah. stuff there, stuff, yeah. we let the cows walk on the pitch for a week before you arrive there. Make it tough for you to get there. Yeah, no. Let you yeah. stay in the old course house, not the yeah, new one. Not, yeah, not yeah. the new one. And and the, is that where it basically started, where your where your love for rugby started, or was it even prior to that where um, you thought you could make rugby a career? Um, yeah, when I thought of uh, of a career from rugby, I surely think that was but at Oakdale, you know, I think um, I, I grew up in a I grew up in a family that was massive um, rugby supporters yeah. and watched the game every weekend. My dad is a big blue bull. He still is. My grandfather was a big, big uh, Stormers guy, you know. So um, it was interesting on a Sunday. <laughs> dynamic. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting dynamic. And uh, I just think my love for sport in general, just when I was a younger kid, uh, my mom, she was just pushing us to do everything. And um, she was always, she showed me how to hand off and stuff, you know. She was one of those moms who yeah, ran yeah. next to the pitch when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> yeah. Do this and do this and you do were that. that. Guy. Yeah, I was that guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in yeah. fairness to her, she was next to the pitch every game since till I was uh, till I left for Limerick um, she was next to the pitch or in the stands you know still telling me what to do and stuff you know so I think um, when I realized it was a career opportunity was when I we played uh, Crane Week here in uh, sorry in Salambos at Port yeah. Then I realized there's something here, you know, when agents start talking to you and stuff like that. And your dad obviously won the argument because then you went straight to the Bulls. He loved it huh? he gave me a uh, his farm <laughs> cruiser, he gave me cows. I was like the best son they could be because my brother went to Lions and oh, he, yeah. got yeah. <laughs> he got nothing. And who did, so, who did you support? Did you, who did you support? When you? I was a younger kid, yeah. oh, the Bulls always. Okay. Uh, always the Bulls. I was just grew up in a Blue Bulls house. You know, yeah. my dad is a big Blue Bulls for and my grandfather. So uh, my my his dad. Uh, so it's just always the Bulls. You know, they. I just like the way they played. You know, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> You, you like the physicality. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But then you played you played over 50 games for the Bulls, right? I, yeah, I did, yeah, 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 yeah I did, yeah. Um, but then you decided to to leave South Africa. Yeah. So, childhood dream playing for uh, for the Bulls. And I can remember in, in 2012, you were actually part of the, mm. the Springbok squad as one of the young guns and, you know, up and, up and coming yep. uh, youngsters in that, in that group. Uh, you know, didn't play, obviously, mm. uh, then for yeah. South Africa, but then decided to... 
to uh, to move abroad. What what kind of brought that uh, you know brought that on? Was it? Yeah, I think when I I'm not gonna lie. When I was, I remember uh, while I was training at the Bulls um, when I was 19, 20, I was in the gym. I remember I always like when I was benching and stuff. I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna do eight reps. But if I get to ten. I was seeing that Springbok jersey in front of me, so I surely wanted to play for the yeah. Springboks. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I grew up yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and it is part of me, you know. It's part of me. I am South African yeah. also. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, Heineke, um, he was at the Bulls and he just, look, I've said this a few times, but he just he felt I should play hooker and it just didn't work out, you know. I tried it once, tried a scrum. I was like, ah. I, I remember Gary showed me the ropes and I was like, no, this is not going to work, Gary. Guys, there's one way how to get rid of a loose forward is listen, yeah. <laughs> Tell him to play hooker. Go play hooker and do a live scrum. Yeah, exactly. Session. So yeah. through, we got both for no, it. That's no, not mentality. No, hey. it, was, it, was, uh, it was one of those, uh, you know, the, when the props go, oh, let's for a warm up, just three on three. I was yeah. like, yeah, my neck went, my shoulder <laughs> went. I was like, I have, actually, if you use this during the game, I want to tackle, you know. Uh -uh. So as I, as I said before, we have our Vodacom fan favorites, and there's another mm -hmm. one from one of your big fans. Just play, press play there up top. Good day, I'm Morris from Cape Town. I've got a question for CJ. CJ, have you had any apology from the coaches that <laughs> said you were too small for international rugby in South Africa? Great show, guys. Uh, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. I think it keeps. I was myself a law school speaker, and I was always my playing careers. I always had my own thought out where. Jij jezelf is ook gebrand als een klein speler. Wat heb je te doen om jezelf te laten uitstaan voor andere spelers? Als het CJ, John en Scala. First of all, thank you all for your nice contributions jersey. to this beautiful game that we all love. Um, my question for CJ is: We all know that you're a fantastic rugby player, but was when Annika Meyer allegedly said that you're too small to be a bok, was that the final motivation you needed to show us all what a fantastic international player you could be? Yes, so that's, that's three big questions. Um, the first one, um, I, I've, I, I spoke with Heineke, we've, yeah. we've made our piece. It's just, I mean, it's an opinion, that's yeah. how it works. We play this game, you've played it. One guy has to make a decision, so yeah. he just believes it. And yeah, it worked out for me probably better. Um, did, did it motivate me to go when I went over? Yeah. The first two or three years, 100%, I wanted to show everyone what I can do. and. Um, that I wasn't small, you know, because it's funny, like, I never felt I was small, but then yeah. suddenly you're in a yeah. conversation with people and you start, like, standing up tall. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, like, yeah. Starting to yeah, wear platforms. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Check shoes with better, uh, bigger better heels help, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I, I actually picked up 10 kg at Munster, like, okay. within the first six months. Not good weight, uh, yeah. bad weight. But then I actually turned it around into muscle. And then I was 115 kg, 116. Sure. They were very happy with that. Huge. That is the yeah. weight, yeah, well, I, way I too mean, big for my frame. It's kind of, what did, what did you play? No, probably between 110 and one, but I, 115 would have been heavy for me. Yeah. 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 Probably between 110 and 114. And how tall? I mean, how tall? No, so, I'm, yeah, so 188 on a good day. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I am a bit short. Like, yeah. look, I'm not going to jump yeah. in, in most of the line. I'm option yeah. three, yeah. maybe option four. You know? Yeah. But uh, I got around the Primary park. supporter. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I could lift, you know, I'm strong enough. So, um, yeah, that, that motivated me. I wanted to, but then then I realized as I got older that um, you need to get motivation that's actually going to make you a better player and yeah. a better person, you know. So, I made my piece and we, we spoke a good few times. Uh, so, he actually, he's moved to Groot uh, in in close in George, where, where I'm from, yeah. you know, so... It's good to know that, and uh, yeah, spoke to him a few times. He actually congratulated me after with the Lion series uh, yeah. in 2017. So, yeah, it's his opinion. He made a piece. And then, Chida, you move from Pretoria Bulls, mm. and you go to Limerick Munster, you know, European stronghold. It's never easy going abroad. Um, your ride surely wasn't smooth from the get go, or no, was it? No, no, no. I think um, being uh, probably naive going over there thinking it's gonna because I played it started at the Bulls so I thought I played Super Rugby yeah. 22 years old yeah. I liked it I'm yeah. like, actually I liked it and I arrived there Munster has won two European Cups you're yeah. not just gonna walk into a Munster team or any team in Europe I think anyway 
And uh, the first year, so I got signed by a different coach, and the new coach arrived. And yeah, tell, tell us, tell, tell us that story, because <laughs> yeah. I, because the coach that, that 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 actually signed you, and you can delve into that now. It's the coach which I played under when I was at Munster, uh, and and really enjoyed him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, yeah. Tell us, that's Dumper. The, Dumper, Dumper, what yeah. a man! So don't, I was, I never met him. I don't even get, I never met him, but I spoke him, spoke to him on the phone and stuff, and I was like, yes, this guy's full of energy. He's like yeah. straight on to the point. Yeah. This is going to be great. So I like I spoke like anyway spoke on the phone with them. So I arrived at Munster in like I think I had a pair of fellies on jeans and stuff, and they were training away, and they were like, "What the hell is this guy? He's <laughs> from America or something? Or he's surely from a farm?" But uh, pitched up and uh, went to the head coach, and I was like, "Hello, Dumper," and he goes, "Nah, mate, uh, Rob Penny. That's my that's my best uh, yeah. New Zealand accent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Rob Penny," and I'm like, "Ah, okay, I'm the new player." He yeah. goes, oh, "I haven't heard of you." I was like, "Ah." Here we go. Back in the queue. Yeah, back in the queue. So, first training, I knew straight away I'm going to have to work hard here because now you're standing in a in a in a, in a huddle with Paul Connell, Dougie Owlett, uh, Tony Kokal, and uh, Tony Karai, and yeah. big big players. Rana Gara. Yeah. I mean, I played my first game Rana Gara at ten. You're like that stuff you see on PlayStation, yeah. PlayStation 06, where yeah. you're on the cover or you see this on TV. That yeah. doesn't happen to a normal now guy like me. Yeah, now I'm playing with them. So. Played 10 games my first year, broke my finger, and then I just didn't play it. I just didn't, I was too light, uh, and I had to work on my tackle technique. You know, in South Africa, we tackle a bit higher. Yes. To an extent. I mean, I we, we do the chest thing and try to grapple with the ball. Yeah. yeah that's it. When I got there, it's all about chop tackle. It's yeah. like just, just, just how they roll, you know, so. So how, how was it, um, when you arrived there, were you still, because uh, that's a fascinating thing for me about Munster, based in two, two venues. Yep. Half the yeah. team in Limerick, half the team in Cork. And you've got um, your own set of medical uh, personnel in Limerick, your own set of medical personnel. And then, in, and then in how many times Cork. do you train together back then? No, like twice. Uh, twice a in a week. Yeah. Twice so, in a week. Tuesday and so, Thursday. Yeah. So, <laughs> my, the, the amazing thing for me when I arrived at Munster, so now I'll say you arrived there, you know, we just finished the, yeah. the Tri Nations, uh, won the Tri Nations that year. And, and we get there, and, and I did my, my first training session in Cork, and now you meet all the Cork guys, and Rog was, was obviously based over there. Um, and I wasn't meant to start the first game, but then eventually I started the first game. But the, the Cork accent for me, <laughs> got you. <laughs> it's very different to the Limerick yeah. accent as well. So now Rog is 10, and I'm 12, and like 15 minutes into the game, I'm like, Rog, <laughs> You need to speak slower. I can't understand what or you're saying. Or speak English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't understand what you're saying. Um, but, but yeah, it was, yeah, you know, my time at, at Munster was, was amazing. And I mean, those names that you, that you mentioned, you know, to, no, to play sure. with those guys. So, so first year tough and then, and then kind of... Then it started snowballing. Two. Yeah, year two started getting better. I started playing more regularly. And I think that's what you need as well when you're, uh, when you're at that level. You need yeah. to play week in and week out. So I started playing more week in and week out, and I actually started understanding. It's funny because I went over with like literally two sentences of English. That is it, and I, <laughs> I could understand it. But like every time I spoke, until now, like they were like, we don't, we don't understand. You, man. What <laughs> yeah. the hell are you doing? Like, your man, yeah, yeah. your man, yeah. yeah, your man, your man. I'm yeah. like, your man, like my wife, like she would go to the shopping center, and they were like. Yeah, your man uh, was here the other day, and she yeah. thought, "You think it's me? I was there, but yeah. it's not me. It's some other guy that they just know. We know." Yeah, just yeah. reference somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Your, man. Your, man. your man. And uh, but anyway, um, that's part I love. But so started yeah. playing more, but I, I couldn't really express myself in the in, in English anyway, yeah. so that I can because I knew things that worked at the Bulls Mall and a uh, few lines and stuff yeah. like that. So when I started speaking more English to more people and understand the game they they saw I, I understand the game so I started playing more and then I was lucky enough 2015 16 17 I was captain um uh, that's that's that, that years with my best years I'd say yeah. 2016 17 is my best years in my professional career for and, sure okay see John a technical point I mean your role was imperative with Munster as the senior ball carrier you were the mm. primary ball carrier there for many seasons yeah that was a that was a that was actually for me, it was a nice experience because then suddenly they try to like get you on the ball the most of the time, you know, second phase from the scrum or a line out. So um, I had many, many ball carries, uh, probably going backwards, most of them. But uh, I, 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 I just, my role was, uh, what it, that I understood was my role was to take it up, 
pull a few guys in, make three or four meters, and then then we start spreading the ball, you know. So uh, that was, but I think what the normal guy probably doesn't didn't understand is this guy's running into brick walls. I loved it. I love yeah. running into a brick wall. And it was head down. Right? Yeah, head down. I, you know, Skalk, you know more than him. I say he's just running <laughs> you, in the back. You guys are going here, yeah, the, the forwards <laughs> are creating a space for the backs. So that, that feeling you get when your blood has moved to a space where it shouldn't be. Like, you get this tingle. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I love it. Like out your face. No, 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 no. But I loved it, man. It's like, it's like a rush. I, I don't know how I'm going to get it now. Especially being based in the north, you get some of those merciless carries where it's yes. a four-second ball. Use it and then yeah. you know, and see Joe gets waiting. the win. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. And we off the line trying to yeah, space each other. Because yeah. the rest of the fins, they always <coughs> meet you as well. So always, yeah, it's, I love that feeling. Yeah. But it's amazing how you talk about the, um, about the, you know, your experience of, of arriving there and then kind of taking time to fit in and all of that. Um, and I would like to know, like, coming from the Bulls and I suppose from a, from a, uh, Bulls rugby point of view in South Africa, they, the Bulls supporters are probably the most uh, fanatic supporters mm. in South Africa, I think. And if you go to Pretoria, you know, people are Bulls mad. But what I experienced when I went to, to Munster, and especially in Limerick, it's like I've never seen people as Munster mad as yeah. there. Yeah. It's like literally you go to a shop or shopping center, and every third person is wearing some kind of Munster memorabilia yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It really was fascinating. That's the thing about uh, Europe, but Munster for me anyway. You, I, I haven't been to a lot of clubs, but I know that how I uh, created them was if we play a away game, the people that was at Thurman Park last weekend, yeah. they're coming. Yeah. They're okay. paying. I've paid for my wife to come to games. It's expensive to go to France and yeah. Uh, yeah. play Saracens. They're there every weekend in Thurman Park. Everyone you talk to, they've got respect for you as a player that they don't want to bother you too much, but they love the game in Munster yeah. so much that they will literally, yeah. they, 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 it's, it's just, yeah. their support is unreal. And it's 100% right there. We played two semis, European semis. The one was in, in Ireland, but it was in Dublin. Yeah. I think we had a thousand Saracens fans there. And yeah. The, and the rest yeah, of the, 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 other Army. Fi- the other 59 was the Red yeah, Army. Yeah, exactly. And then we played one in England at um, in Coventry at Wasps Stadium. Say it again? Wasps Stadium. Wasps yeah. Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, same thing. Thousand, yeah, yeah. thousand Saracen yeah. supporters who had to travel a couple of hours. And I mean, these we guys made the trip. Massive, massive traveling support. No, they take, they take four or five planes and they pack them in and they yeah. go. And people drive and uh, they bring everyone. Uh, everyone goes there. Yeah. So it's... Uh, and it seemed like you you really took to the the Munster culture mm. and the people and the, and all of that. And I, I actually spoke to to Paul O'Connell. Um, you know, I think it was after he retired, or might have been before that still. Um, but after you, you you were there two three seasons, and he said, "Oh, oh, you almost created that that link between the foreign players coming to Munster and the Irish players because you took really took to mm. the the culture and obviously then getting the." the residency or the citizenship uh, and yeah. then representing uh, representing Ireland. So it was a, you know, k- kudos to you for, for doing that. Um, the one question we have here is in terms of, of player development, yep. yeah, you yeah. know, and what they, what they do, uh, you know, overseas, different to what we potentially do here in South Africa okay. for a fan favorite. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Judge and I live in Lone Hill, Johannesburg. Before I begin with my question, I would just like to congratulate CJ Stunder on an incredible career. And I would also like to let everyone at Use It or Lose It know that I'm a huge fan of the show and I really appreciate all the good content that you guys have been posting. Now, my question is, obviously the three of you have played rugby overseas. I would like to know, what do the Northern Hemisphere countries do in terms of player identification and talent development that South African provincial teams and obviously, you know, Saru don't do or vice versa. What have you noticed are the major differences in terms of, you know, do they develop players differently? So do they focus more on skill in the Northern Hemisphere or are they more forward orientated or, you know, do they play a different system of rugby from a young age or how does it work? Scott, and I think relevant to you yep. as well, that question, having, having played abroad so long. Yeah, right? I think the uh, first thing that I saw straight away was smaller squads. Yep. Why smaller squads? So they, uh, in, in, 
in Ireland anyway, or even play for clubs anyway. So yeah. as a younger player, you play for different clubs. So yeah. we have Shannon, you know, about yeah. Shannon, Young Monster, all those things. So that's where they get the game time. We don't, they didn't have, uh, we don't have like an under 19 or 21 competition. So you yeah. only have the A games. I don't know if yeah. you remember them. Yeah. Remember so a smaller them. squad, they still get game time, but they still train with us every day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that was a big difference. So they can, I feel they realize what it takes to be a professional. And it takes big commitment. Yeah. So they don't really get paid either. No. Yeah. Oh, man. Or they get nothing. Yeah. I think it's just like minimal. So they know what it, what it takes. It's a big commitment to do yeah. it. So if you've done your two, <coughs> two or three years, you realize that you're going to do it or not. So yeah. you, you quickly see the guys falling away after three or four months. Yeah. Who, uh, yes. Same here. I mean, like I went to Saracens, which I mean, also has, same as Munster, they develop a lot of their own talent. And they don't have the riches that we've got here in South mm. Africa. So you were at the Bulls at a time where they signed 50 youngsters. Oh, 60, 70, yeah. 60, 70 youngsters. You know, we were never in that position at the Bulls, uh, at the Stormers, you know. But like they've got smaller groups and they put a lot of effort in those guys. Yeah. In South Africa, especially at youth, you almost feel like if a guy's not good enough, the coach is unwilling to improve that mm. player to mm. a point where they can use him. They shelf him after a year and they go look for the next best thing. Um, and that, that's where, why you see a lot of players that you think maybe is not that good come through and turns into international superstars. The time and effort that's invested in the player and also the confidence that's given to the player that we're going to walk this journey with you for three years or four yeah. years. You, know, you just don't have that one year and then out of the one year you get shelved. You know? Yeah, in South Africa, we, it's almost so easy to give someone a chance and then just move on to the next guy exactly. again and just keep... Keep rotating Numbers like that. Numbers are high, that's yeah. the thing. Numbers yeah. are high, you know. Yeah. And it is difficult. I mean, they have to do a job as well. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think... So then, I mean, that that's that's where you found your opportunity. You you went to Munster yeah. and, you know, three years later, you you made your debut for, for Ireland. Um, uh, yeah. Special. You know, how was, how, was, how was that experience? I, I suppose you almost dreamt about playing in the green and gold, <laughs> no, but you just threw the gold away. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I remember... Um, like they call a project player, so I yeah. never knew what everyone called me a project player. I never knew what it meant. I didn't really ask too many questions. Yeah. But um, I remember <coughs> Joe Smith, the co head coach, that yeah. said just before the 2015 World Cup, mm. he came down, watched training, and he asked me what's my what I want to do. And I said to him, I want to play international rugby, and if you can give me opportunity, I want my my biggest thing is I felt anyway monster as a company and as a as a team they spend a lot of time and money in me like i mean when i arrived there was a 22 year old who played well 50 games yeah. for the bulls but yeah. most of them was off the bench you know so that's a big commitment to do from a, for a guy because they normally sign superstars you yeah. yeah. dougie outlet they sign big guys yeah. who's who's already he's embedded in rugby like you know so sign me and um like I wanted, yeah, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> man <laughs> I, um, I wanted to give back, you know, uh, just say thank you as well, uh, part of that. Yeah. And I knew I was decent. I, I knew I was playing well and mm. I, can, I can actually perform on an international level. And um, I said to him, that's it. And if you give me an opportunity, I want to make the team better. And he said to me that, look, if you make, I'm going to select you as any other player, but you need to be better than a um, local guy because Irish born guy yeah yeah, yeah. exactly because it makes sense yeah. it makes yeah. sense so uh, I've got an opportunity and yeah I played against Wales uh, 7th no, February 2016 and oh, what a game I've been playing against them full yeah. Viva Stadium we drew that yeah. game um, but uh, that was that first day it's like it was like an addiction I just wanted to get more and more yeah. and more you know so you know all about it and then the but, loose forwards yeah. with you that day can you uh, remember yes I can remember so it was me Tommy O'Donnell and Jamie Sip Jamie yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were on the flank. I was six. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah blind side. Yeah. Um, I mean, you play, you, you then play against South <coughs> Africa, which was obviously mm. a big thrill for you, obviously playing against your home nation. You had a test series win in South Africa against them. Um, and then on top of that, you, you know, you make history for Ireland by beating the All Blacks. Yeah, first time. Yeah, in Chicago. In uh, Chicago. Special. Yeah, but, but but talk about the 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 series in Cape Town. Oh well, in in South so, Africa first that 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 tour and and memories of that and uh, how weird that must have felt for you as well, I suppose. Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, again, growing up, um, singing the national anthem, it's when Kosi piped up in Newlands. Yeah. I was like, I, I I've been there before, you know, for the S N Twenty. So it is a yeah. weird feeling, you know. You you stand there, your 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 family is there. 
we just had two great weeks in South Africa and uh, but I was so embedded in that team at that mm. moment and I was yeah part of part of the leadership group and we had clear cut goals we wanted to come here to win the series and uh, to win all three games so mm. we I, I had a, like I told myself that Friday okay look switch on to the game and but uh, again, New Orleans is special, you know. Yeah. That was a tough game for me. A uh, few. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> that red card was uh, yeah. not just because it was a red card, you know. Patrick. Yeah. He's, he was a good friend of mine. We played S on twenty together. We came through the ranks, you know. So it was tough. And then New Orleans is special when something happens like yeah. that. You won't know about it because you always play for Western Province yeah. or Springboks. So and it, you had to sit there outside so for. So I remember walking off Mick Carney as our team manager, yeah. and he yeah. just said to me, "Look, just go for a shower. Don't come back out." I yeah. Don't know. But I did. I wanted to sit next to my family, and because I drove, some of them drove from Bloemfontein, some of them yeah. came from Dumbtoria, you know. So, but um, the rest of the tour. Um, was was great. Uh, show the guys around, show them a few good places, uh, went to play golf, uh, went hunting, uh, stuff that I love and I wanted to share with them because I, I, I was in, I, I love the Irish culture so much, but I wanted to almost mix that. So we had great times. Uh, Bobby uh, Prying and Port yeah. Elizabeth and uh, we stayed in uh, Joe was, was Did you did you bring them here to the Paul Valley Golf Estate yet, Paul Devine? Oh, do you know me? I, I didn't yeah. do that. My brother yeah. would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I brought him yeah. here. We played a bit of golf and uh, they enjoyed it. And uh, the nice thing about it is a few, uh, there's a lot of actually um, Irish um, Irish guys here and they quite enjoyed it. We had a good night at uh, the no, clubhouse. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place. You, you kind of already answered it, but just yeah. press play there. CJ, this is Mike here. Um, yeah, just firstly, congratulations on your incredible rugby career um, and for all you've achieved. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, obviously, a lot of South African boys grow up uh, just dreaming about the day they can wear their green and gold jersey and, um, and sing the national anthem. So when you had your first couple of games against the Springboks, um, did you ever find yourself quietly singing along to uh, the South African anthem? Uh, and how was that uh, transition, having to play uh, against the team you probably grew up wanting to play for? Hi guys, I'd just like to say, awesome show. Love the bad joke section. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, coming. Yeah. Up, one of my biggest <laughs> dreams is always to sing the national anthem in the, with the Springboks. So I want to know how it felt for CJ standing with Ireland watching the national anthem I mean, for me, I would have run across and sang the national anthem <laughs> with South Africa. Oh, you're going to clap myself. Yeah. <laughs> Someone probably clap me while I'm halfway there. Um, no, like, I already answered it, but it was like, I am South African. I'm not going to yeah. you know, hide that, you know, and uh, I am back here. So um, I was actually, uh, when the guys played this weekend, I was actually singing along, you know, and, and it is a special anthem as well. Yeah, because uh, I grew up with it. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, but I mean, for that period, I mean, you played fifty-one Test matches for Ireland. Yeah. You, you know, you you put your heart and soul into it, and and um, and at that stage, you just, I suppose, you transform into. No, hundred percent. Into yeah. so I always use Cork as an example of someone who just transform into something totally different when he goes onto the rugby field. You know, totally different to, to who he is off the field. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I should and, laugh or what. Yeah, no, 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 it's true. Uh, you know, and, and I suppose you did the same when you were you were representing Ireland. Yeah, yeah you, 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 like you just said, if you go into a mindset, you know, you've got a job to do here. Um, and I, that, that it was my life as well. I've been there for 10 years. That says I was there for already four or five years, you know, so... Um, I was calling. I call Limerick home. It's yeah. just, you know, it's, just it's also like you're a pro sportsman, and that's another level up. You yep. know, it's like yep. the pinnacle. Yeah. We think it's the pinnacle, and then you get selected to play for the Lions. Yep. To go yeah. to a New Zealand. That was special. Uh, didn't expect it at all. Uh, I remember. No, we didn't either. We were very special. <laughs> <laughs> very special. <laughs> oh, friends, friends like you. And, and, uh, and you you've got to explain how much it means to the players to uh, be picked for the Lions. I remember, so all the teams, now they, they did it, but like we had Rossi at Munster, so Rossi was like, it's the Lions, we're training. So, But yeah. all the other teams had like a dinner or a lunch. Yeah. They're sitting down, watching the TV, all the names are getting yeah. announced. So uh, we were training and uh, I was like, I told Alan Walters, he was here. Yeah. yeah. I said to him, Alan, if something happens, 
don't tell me if I'm not in, but if I'm in, just go like this. I trained because I know he's his, his phone next to the pitch. Yeah. But anyway, I finished training. I couldn't spot him, whatever. And I walked and this like random guy, like not, I don't even know him. He's just walking his dog. He's like, oh, congratulations, congratulations. on getting selected for Lions. I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks, man. I, yeah. I thought my wife's going to call me or my yeah. dad or someone, yeah. my mom. But couldn't care less. No, no. Yeah. Like, so I was, for the same too, I was at Saracens and I, I've mentioned it before, but like we basically sat down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was pine support for the guys and everyone who got selected, yeah. it was basically just, yeah, but a big bun just a fight. party. Yes, exactly. There's a lager. You're going, you're going to represent the Lions. Exactly. So, uh, but anyway, we had a few drinks afterwards. But uh, the Lions is, uh, it's just, it's the Lions. It's ex it's exceptional. I that whole week, the build up, going to New Zealand. That's why I feel now without the supporters at the stadiums. And yeah, I mean, when we went to New Zealand, there was about 250, 300,000 people flying yeah. over. Yeah. They were, it was a Red Sea, there was, amazing. you could feel the vibe, you know, and uh, r running out and that second test and the third test was just, oh man, it's, it's yeah. for me, it was like... And a drawn series. Yeah, yeah exactly. oh, that was weird, that was weird. I made a joke in Ireland, you would probably understand it, but I said it's like kissing your sister. Yeah. yeah. You're getting a kiss, but you're actually getting nothing. Yeah. But, uh, but they were like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's part of the bad joke yeah, section. Yeah. How did you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what's wrong with this guy, you know, because like... They, um, I, I played 40 minutes. Um, I remember Ken Owens or someone, I can't remember, Ken Owens picked someone up. There was a penalty. It was dodgy. Yeah. Then they kicked the ball out and it was over. Yeah, and yeah. we all were standing there thinking, there's what surely a happened? dropout or yeah. so someone's kicked. Happen, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. we looked at each other. I remember Kieran Reed walking <coughs> over and we were all like, okay. And it was just a handshake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, was a, I, was yeah the, I was shocked. Till we, till we on the back to the plane because yeah. I flew to Dubai with the guys. I was on a plane thinking, are we going to play at least another <laughs> 10 minutes or something? You know? yeah. So, But again, yeah. uh, the draw test against them there was, uh, that second test winning that uh, yeah. put us back on the map. That's but right, that yeah. third test was, was difficult. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of what the guys are missing out on now mm. with, the, with the Lions tonight. It's such a special occasion for the Lions guys and for the Bok guys. Um, and with the traveling fans, and now we're not experiencing that, you know. So it, it, it's an absolute pity. You know, you take this Just, place and, and yeah. for them to... To be able to experience this, what Cape Town has to yeah. offer, what the rest of this, the country has to offer, um, it's very unfortunate. Um, Scala, you touched on this one earlier. Should we maybe talk a little bit more about the current series, line series, I, I before think we so. go yeah. to yeah. this yeah. one? Yeah. Obviously, you, I presume you had a Brian watch, like most South Africans, and watch yeah, yeah, the yeah. first yeah, test exactly. match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your takeaways from that and prediction, maybe, for the second I test? Actually. Uh, when I watched the game, uh, or sorry, when I saw the team selection, I thought to myself, okay, this is going to be great. Here we go. I think the, I thought I tipped the box for the first yeah. one because I just thought they won the SAA one, you know, yeah. the yeah. A team. And uh, I just the saw spring this, box yeah, called SAA. Yeah. Exactly, the selections and stuff like that. But then I, I actually, we were, we were Brian, we have a nice Brian. I, I told the, my family that second half, first 10 minutes is going to be vital. If the Lions get a penalty, go to the corner and they score, it's game over. Yeah. Boom, five and minutes. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Happened. And uh, I think it's just... You're, you just know, you're just saying that now as if you predicted it. Okay, let's, right? call my, let's call him. Let's <laughs> quickly call him. He was standing next to me. He couldn't believe it. Like, I predicted it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just saying it. But um, but I think the the way they changed the game plan second half was smart. You know, they yeah. kept on kicking the ball. Yes. And I think in the backfield, there was a bit of uh, hesitation and they just kept on doing that. And the ball never got caught clean. So yeah. they yeah. got the ball back. So, yeah. you know, so, yeah. But going to the second and third test, I think the next one, it's, it's vital. We just, want, yeah. we just want the box to win so that we can... Oh, well, the third yeah, test excitement. I've, I've, I've selfishly, me and John, wants the, to go to a decider. Yeah, it's no, it's it, it, yeah, it, no, but the excitement. It, it's yeah. also so bloody hard when you sit there and you've got to explain to South Africa why the box lost. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. Want, you want the box to, yeah. to get a result this weekend. Well, it's, it's, it's already, I think, a, a, a great tour and a success, even mm -hmm. after the first test match. The fact that it's being played, I think, is just phenomenal. So it... It could have been so much better, but uh, it is what it is now. So at least we are seeing live test match rugby. Scala touched on, well, I think on this a little bit, but let's just have a look at that one. Hi, John, Skulk and CJ. Uh, my name is Jan Kelder. I'm from a town called Springs here in the East End. Uh, my question to you, CJ, is what was your most memorable win in an Irish jersey? The 2016 win against the All Blacks in Chicago, or the 2017 win against the Box at the Viva Stadium. 
Love your show, guys. Enjoy the day. Cheers. Hi, CJ. This is Garrett from the Cape. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your great rugby career and the success you've had with um, Munster, Ireland, and the British and Irish Lions. I followed your career with great interest, and I think you've been a great ambassador for the game of rugby. My question will be, of all the victories that you've been involved in um, while playing for Ireland, uh, which victory was the most satisfying for you personally? Because you beat all the major test playing nations while you were playing for Ireland. And my second quick question is, it's not Guinness or Kilkenny? Oh, there we go. Yeah. That, that man's been there before. Yeah. <laughs> He's been there before. See, we've got a He's worldwide. Been a He's been, we've got a worldwide uh, audience on this show. He's been there before. I like that. Uh, Guinness. I'm a Guinness man. I, yeah. just, I just love two or three Guinness. No, just not too many. Eh? No, no, no. It's uh, the next morning. It's quite tough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, m most memorable. Uh, Chicago was was memorable. But beating them in uh, Viva Stadium in mm, 2018. 18. 18. Yeah. Was uh, you caught. It's home soil. You can now say, you, you, if you yeah. beat them once, they think oh, it's a fluke. Here we yeah. go. You can see that in the attitude afterwards. Maybe you got lucky, yeah, but then beating them yeah. in Ireland because they came to win us or yeah. to, to beat us. Sorry, yeah. that's my best English. <laughs> 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 yeah. They came to beat us, you know, and uh, we won them there. Um, and then another one was uh, winning um, the game against England in when they came came over the Grand Slam. Grand in, Slam. Oh, I can't remember. Twenty, maybe twenty eighteen as well. Um, and we just took it away from them. That's look. Yeah. My dad, my, my, my mom and dad was there. Was a great, great yeah, trip for them. Great. That was that was special. So uh, those two games. Um, so. Yeah, the, the, I mean those were amazing games as well. Eh? Yeah, uh, Six Nations. This, I mean, yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. And we often, you know, for us, it's not, you know, we in summer in January and February, and there's sometimes for us it's quite a hard watch, but. I mean, it's enormous in Europe. We yeah. don't we don't understand the magnitude of those games. Yeah. yeah. We, then, uh, we we sorry we played uh, England in St Paddy's Day to get the Grand Slam. That was 2018. Yeah. The other one was 2017. Um, we beat them in London. That was oh yeah. man, it was not big special. not big celebrations though. Yeah, yeah. not at all. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I remember waking up. Well, sorry. No one celebrates when no, they no. beat the English. Yeah, right? no, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Um, CJ, we're getting it towards the end. Um, okay. But we've got we, I've got one more. One more question. Actually, we've got some videos that came in about, you know, are you going to play in, in South Africa? You know, a lot of people speculating if you might. Because you're young, eh? You're 30, yeah, 31. You're 31. Yes. We're still young, yeah. very young. Yeah, yeah. Um, will you ever consider that? I, I know what the answer is. Uh, and maybe explain, <laughs> just just explain to us why not. Um, okay. <laughs> you your know, body's sore. Your yeah, body's yeah, yeah, sore. Yeah, your right? body's yeah, sore. Yeah. You know quite well why, <laughs> but uh, no, so... Uh, no, I won't play. I, I've got a few uh, chats with a few South African uh, mm. teams, but um, I. So in Ireland, if you retire, but, but, but sorry, before sorry, you go, to yes. that, I mean, it is because of your your body being yeah, quite no, sore. I, and yeah, your, I, you said your shoulder. And shoulder to my like. It's funny now. I, I like. I spoke. I saw you about well two weeks ago. Yeah. When I said I'm done, and I started, I got took four weeks off. The fifth week, when I, the boys started the preseason. My bicep. I picked up my daughter and my bicep was like, it was torn on me. I was yeah. looking for it to sit there, but it was so... I, I remember playing a European uh, a semi-final against you where your one ankle was gone, hang, gone. basically hanging off. Gone. I did my synesmosis two weeks before that and I was, uh, they made a cast me in Germany so I could just play that game. I yeah. couldn't run sideways. I remember scoring a try against against you guys. Marco yeah. tackled me from the front. Yeah. But it was gonna. I was gonna break my ankle again, or just go forward. So I luckily, just went forward. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. My ankles are dust. You know, I just yeah. I did both synesthesias without yeah. getting operations. But playing 10, 10, week, 10 days later, yeah. it's not good because um, yeah. you're young and you want to play. I wanted to play all those yeah. days. My shoulder, my back started giving me but problems. But also, you, you want to be able to play with your your daughter now. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and kids yeah. one day. Mm. But but there is like an added and maybe just explain the mm. the incentive in Ireland that they do have. With, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. So and why you really can't for play. the provinces to keep their players, not to let them go to France or Japan or uh, to, to the UK, whatever. There is a sportsman's sports. Sorry, uh, sportsman's and um, artistic. In, yeah, or entertain, uh, so entertainment. Yes, yeah. um, uh, tax relief. Mm. So for a certain amount, uh, you get a certain percent presentation back from your tax that you've yeah. paid over. 
your best 10 years. So you yeah. can go and select your best 10 years. I only had 10 years. Yeah. But the big guys like a Paul O'Connell and Brian O'Scroll, they would have more. And then yeah. they select yeah. their best years and get a bit of, get some money back, you know. Um, yeah, so when you then retire in Ireland, you, you, yes. can, you can claim that back. Yes, you know, you, which... they actually changed it to Europe. Uh, oh, yes. You can go to the, now. You can go to France. That means John also got to pay us. One hundred percent. That's yeah. why you're asking yeah. the question. You know, I, was, <laughs> I just want to inform my viewers how it works over there. <laughs> um, so um, they give you a relief, you know. And um, look, I could probably play another six years. I could have gone gone to France yeah. or play another two or three years, easy, because yeah. I can still do it. But this is one <coughs> thing when I started talking to my my wife, um, especially, is that I wanted to finish when I was playing well and I wanted to leave at a place where I can walk away and leave Munster in a good place. Yeah. Saying, not saying that um, if I stayed, it would have changed, yeah. but I wanted to leave in a good place and but for a bit of respect, you know, so yeah, that, that's just me, you know, just something no. like that. And you, you no. certainly did, I think amazing you can be amazing career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Part of that nice. career. So it means uh, a lot coming from you. Uh, uh, amazing career, man. If yeah. I know I told you this. Tell, tell us that story. There, there's not, it's not a funny story. You won't remember this, but we, uh, I mentioned we played Crane Week in uh, at, at Salamos, yeah. and you came in with the Springboks. Yes. And you, there's a few of you guys, you did like a chat or whatever, yeah. but I remember sitting in the, in the, in the, in the side of the... Because we block. broke away, like loose forwards went... And yeah, yeah, I remember. In the, the loose in forwards the, in the, and the centres. Yes, yeah. yes, in the, in the all different classes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. walked past me and I was like sitting there thinking I'm the main Mac now. Yeah. I'm the yeah. captain of my team. You walked past me. I saw your head and your body <laughs> and your, the size of your clothes. And I was yeah. like, how the hell is that guy a human being? Like? <laughs> yeah. You just walked up there and then you started talking and I then I... I probably didn't realize that um, there's so much different things in rugby. Like I always just thought you're just machine, killing yeah. people on the pitch, tackling hard and carrying hard. And you sat down and chatted nicely. I actually learned so much just from that moment. But I, that's that's a great story. And that's <coughs> other story I had about the main guy. Yeah. So at Munster, if you're late or you do something weird, you get fined, like any other yeah. team, but yellow wise. So a normal fine for being late is like 50, 50, or, like, bucks, yeah, yeah. 50 or 100 yeah. or whatever. So apparently, when he was late, he just ditched, ditched his car in the middle of nowhere because... Well, me? Yeah, you. That's <laughs> what I heard. So I got him to drop that in the show. Okay, yeah, yeah. So at the university we train, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. actually a university. Like, yeah. it's lovely. Yeah, it's almost like Stalin yeah. yeah. So, But there's lots of, lots of cars and whatever. So apparently, he just the ditched just, his car. He can't, eh? Because it's 25 euro to get it released. So he's too tight to pay the 50. <laughs> you know, to pay the 25. <laughs> I would say it's smart. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's right. remember like, that. I would want to know what happened the night before. Parking, <laughs> parking was always uh, an absolute mess. There's, there's, no there's no parking. Yeah. There's no parking. But that happens when you arrive nine and training is like... Come on, Tell us a bit more. Even... Guys, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the bad joke section. And CJ already started with it. Okay, CJ, you have watched the show. I'm very glad that you watched the show. Okay, You yes. did, eh? I did, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Beast one, the last one. Yes, I watched yeah. the last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you good. haven't watched it yet, go watch Tenda the Beast. What a show. Tawarera. What a man. Someone tuned me on the, on the, after the show that I didn't pronounce his surname correctly. How do you pronounce it differently? Tawariera. Yeah, I thought it was right. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, bad jokes. You're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> you, have you play against each other? Oh, so we have to tell jokes. No, yeah. I'm telling no, jokes. He's telling jokes. We're not telling jokes. Joke. And you're not allowed okay. to laugh. John, John, no John, jokes, John holds score, but like, yeah. I mean, I'll it's actually score? irrelevant. His jokes are... But if no, one laugh, no, no, no. if no one laughs, then it's so awesome. laugh with an open mouth or can I like... No, no, if you grin anything. If I see anything in your face. It's deadpan. Okay. But then again, if you don't laugh, then it spoils the whole thing. Okay, but the... the that, <laughs> I always get a, a little yeah, bit of a laugh from someone. Camera. I think we should set up a camera this way yeah. for the, for the <laughs> camera. So you, don't wanna, you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose this yeah. game. Okay, and you spoke about your, your uh, ankle as well. But what part of the body always loses, lo loses? Which part? What part of the body always loses? The feet. The feet, the feet. I actually like that one. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good <laughs> yeah, start. It's so bad. It's so I'm going to use it. I'm actually going to use that. That's actually a very good one. Okay. I've got some good ones today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a man who has finished digging? Doug. Because he was finished. Daddy, he dug. But CJ's English is so bad, he doesn't know the tense. I don't understand what's going on here. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. Okay. 
That's okay. past tense or previous tense. So what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> okay, I'm feeling tense. What do you call a line of men waiting to get haircuts? A barber queue. Barbecue. Yes. You got you got you, you got two out of three there. Well, exactly. Yeah. One. One nil versus the cameraman. Uh, That's a good one, eh? I'm on fire today. You've been sending you. You've been, no, been, 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 been asking for yeah, yeah, he's been asking for jokes. Okay. You know what peekaboo is, right? Back mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just heard a man had an accident while playing peekaboo. He's currently in the ICU. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. unbelievable. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Okay. Uh, Skulk one, uh, CJ zero, cameraman zero. <laughs> uh, okay, last one. Uh, you're getting better, John. I this like is actually show. the best one. Skala, this one. This one. <laughs> A failiki. This one is for you. Okay. Now this one is uh, actually no, no, yes. yeah, not a failiki, but this is for you. Okay, think, think skull. A man is buying a banana, an apple, and two eggs. The cashier says, you must be single. The man replied, how did you know that? The cashier says, because you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think skog <laughs> a, yeah, yes I keep saying think skog man no no I was thinking about uh, you think about the banana, the banana and the two eggs <laughs> <laughs> the banana and the two eggs have me thinking of different things yeah. Yeah. ah guys thanks Josh. I must say it actually got better <sighs> I watched this uh, season one I was like thinking these jokes are they're bad eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's very different yeah. when you're in the hot seat I know. I, know I think that. I'm also getting more comfortable with the fact that the bad jokes aren't going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I wanted yeah, them yeah, out yeah. after the first time you said it, didn't it? No, yeah, you're yeah. just comfortable that the bad jokes are going to be bad. <sighs> okay. Made peace with that. CJ, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a, it's been an absolute blast, and uh, well done on an amazing career. We, it would have been great if it was for South Africa, but I think sometimes you know life comes down to to choices, choices and opportunities, and. Uh, Ireland gave you an opportunity and I think you had an unbelievable career. So well done with that. Well done for the career at Munster. I know the impact you had there as well. So thanks. CJ, thank you for answering John's phone call and coming on the show, <laughs> first of all. He um, blue ticked me. He blue ticked me. He did. You, he, he ignored you. I mean, I would too. You know? I didn't um, blue tick yeah. you. I get but, that a lot. I mean, welcome back to yeah. South Africa. I know you, your wife, your little daughter is happy down here in, in the Cape. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the farm's not too far away for exactly. you guys, but yeah, we massive fans and congrats on an awesome career. Yeah. Oh, oh, thanks. Uh, you know, retired nice and young, so um, we'll get you on the golf course yeah, soon. Yeah, exactly. No Looking doubt. And uh, thanks for doing the show. It was very informative and we loved it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I, uh, for me, it is more an honor being on the show with you two guys because I actually looked up uh, when I was a kid mm -hmm. playing rugby. So thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for all yeah. the memories and no. thanks for everything. No, no thanks. We'll that. we'll see each other a lot now. Hundred percent. Um, so you go, you're not going to answer all our calls. <laughs> yeah. CJ, do you? We're giving away. A, we'd love to give you a Springbok jersey as well, but yeah. but this one's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> giving, Is that part we, of it? We're yeah. giving, Another one of my bad jokes. Um, <laughs> we're giving it to one of our fans that sent in a video. So if you can choose, maybe your your favorite question. Yes. And then that person will receive the jersey signed by, we'll get all three of us to sign yeah. it. Yes, I think your man, uh, Garrett, uh, he's uh, winner for today. Good. He's the one that asked about the Guinness. The Guinness, the Guinness Kilkenny. Kilkenny. Yeah. There you yeah. go, Garrett. Your jersey will be on its way. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, another great episode with uh, international superstar CJ Stander. We are at the beautiful Val de V. Um, and at the Paul Valley Golf Course. So if you're ever down here in Paul and in the Cape, come play around the golf. Just fun, Rake. We'll share Rake Nietzsche's um, <laughs> cell phone you. number <laughs> with you. Um, but if you don't want to call him, you can also WhatsApp us and send in your videos to this number, our WhatsApp number. You can, um, your videos will be part of the show then for next week. We'll tell you who our next guest, guest is. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do the Facebook and Instagram That's thing. It. And we're going to go now. <laughs>
episode six done. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, guys.